Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. It says, For this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. You know, that's that's whose knowledge we want. We don't want the knowledge of this world, the philosophy and doctrine of this age. You know, actually, when he's talking here, the Apostle Paul, he's actually referring to some false doctrine that crept into the church. And he's saying, I want you filled with the knowledge of God. Not all this skepticism and mysticism and syncretism. They were combining all kind of stuff and all kind of doctrines and religions, and people do that today. But he said we need to be filled with the knowledge of his will. Amen? Amen. And it says in the next verse that you may walk worthy of the Lord fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Somebody saying, somebody say, walking worthy of the Lord. Walking worthy of the Lord. And when we walk worthy of the Lord, that pleases him. God wants us to please him, and he wants us to be fruitful. Did you know that? He wants us to be fruitful. He doesn't, you know, Pastor Clarissa was talking last week about increase. Well, That is increasing when you are fruitful, when your life bears fruit, when you have a life that resembles God. And God is not a God of decrease, and he's not a God of, you know, barely making it. He's a God of increase. He wants us to bear fruit. Amen. He wants our lives to be fruitful. Not Is anybody here today? He wants us to be fruitful. He wants us to have fruitful lives. Amen. So that when people see the goodness of God in your life, that that draws them in. They're like, man, God is doing something in their life. I want what they have. Well, that is what is who who we are as children of God. He wants that for us. Amen. But when we're talking about, we've been on a series called uh, Jesus. uh, What's his name of the series we're called? Is it on the screen? Yeah, Jesus is worth. That's the name of it. Jesus is worth. Now, when we're talking about that, walking worthy of the Lord and a worthy walk, I'm not talking about earning a position as a son, as a daughter, because Jesus gave us that position by his sacrifice, by what he did. We're not talking about earning righteousness or earning our justification. We're not talking about those things. We're not saying that you have to work to get God to say, you're now my son. You are now forgiven. You are now blameless. No, we're not talking about that. We have been given that position. But because we have that position, we should walk and live as a child of God. You know, we should respond to the position that we've been given and walk worthy of that position and live in a manner that pleases him. Lives in a manner that says, that's my, that's my child right there. That's my boy. That's my daughter. Amen? You know, if you, if you had a son and you say you were a, a multi-billionaire and you gave, you don't even have to be a multi-billionaire. You just educated your child good. You raised them up. You gave them all the tools and all the resources they need to, to succeed in life. And then at 40 years old, you know, somebody says, hey, how's your son doing? Oh, you know, he's in the basement still playing video games, you know. (laughs) Would that please you? No. Would he be living a life worthy of you? No, you, you, you'd be embarrassed to talk about him almost, right? You'd be like, ah, well, let's change the subject, you know. Let's talk about my other child. They're doing good, you know. (laughs) No, we're not, we don't, we want God pleased with us, Amen. And it pleases him when we walk worthy of it. No, that guy's not ashamed of us, but we can live a life that pleases him more than others. It's just true. Amen. Amen. And so that's what we want to do. We, or we're not earning it, but we're walking worthy of it. And we're not trying to make God worthy of our lives. We're not trying to make God adapt to us and say, God, you got to adapt to my life. And when I can fit you in, I'll fit you in. No, we are making ourselves worthy of him. Amen. But let's get into what we're going to get into today or else, you know, we'll keep reviewing. The first week we talked about God. Jesus is worth my fight. Amen. You know, Jesus fought for us. We should fight for him. 
We should fight for the things he's bought and paid for. If he's bought and paid for it, he's redeemed us from it, then we should fight for it. And we shouldn't just lay down and say, hey, whatever will be, will be. No, we should fight for the things that Jesus bought and paid for. Amen. If, he's, if he went through the, the torture, if he went through the persecution, if he went through the death, burial, and resurrection for us, then we ought to endure some hardness for him. Amen. So he's worth our fight. And then we said, Jesus is worth my love. And, uh, you know, just like the scripture we just read at the offering, he's worth obeying. And when we obey, that means we truly love him. And when we truly love him, the father becomes more real to us and he manifests himself to us. Amen. So we talked about that. And then last week we talked about Jesus is worth our gratitude, our thanksgiving. Amen. And we talked about that a lifestyle of thanksgiving. We want to cultivate that. We want to cultivate a lifestyle of thanksgiving and not a lifestyle of entitlement where people owe us, where we feel like, no, you owe me something. No, people don't owe us anything. And we get in, what we're doing is we're getting our expectation off of people and onto the Lord. So Amen. We're, we're not looking to people to meet our needs, solical needs, emotional needs, uh, financial needs. We're looking to God. And he will use people, but our eyes are on him. Our eyes are on him. We're looking to him. We're expecting from him. And when you're expecting from him, how do you know that? That keeps you happy with everybody else, yeah. right? Yeah. That keeps you happy. You're not, you're not miffed and you're not upset with somebody, you know, because they didn't call you in a few months or they didn't do something for you. They didn't wish you a happy birthday or something, you know. I, I, got, I have some family that's not saved, so they'll never see this, you know, just so you know. They're not trying to walk with God. But I've had family, you know, on social media, blank people, cuss people out because they didn't wish them a happy birthday. I'm like, that is so childish. Like, that's so entitled. Who is, you're not due a happy birthday just because it's your birthday? Like, quit expecting from people. Like, I don't think like that in my mind. I don't, yeah, it's, if you wish me a happy birthday, I'm thankful. But I am not expecting, hey, it's my birthday. The presents better come on in. I'm not thinking that. Like some, you see what I'm saying? Unthankful. It's just pride. And the reason why we, we mention, I say pride, because pride is the nature of the devil. It's what caused Lucifer to fall from his place in heaven from the father. He said, I will exalt my throne above the Lord. I will be like the most high. See, he, he wanted the attention on him. No, but when we get our attention on God, our, our attention on him and our expectation on him, man, that's when he can bless us because our faith is in him. Amen. So this week, let's get into what we're going to get into. What did I tell you to turn? Did I tell you to turn anywhere? Oh, 1 Samuel chapter 2. Go to 1 Samuel chapter 2. Before I start preaching all that again. 1 Samuel chapter 2. And let's start in verse 30. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30, it says, Therefore, the Lord God of Israel says, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father would walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, Far be it from me, for those who honor me, I will honor. And those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. This is what we're talking about today. Somebody say, Jesus is worth my honor. I don't know if you thought about it much, but when the Lord manifests his presence in this place and in your house and your life and you sense the peace of God, the love of God, that's the Lord honoring you. When you have favor and you're in a situation and they do things for you that they didn't do for other people, that's the Lord honoring you. When your needs are met and everybody else is dealing with poverty and lack and everybody is dealing with famine, but you are increasing, the Lord is helping you, you're not behind, you're ahead, that's the Lord honoring you. When the Lord heals your body, that's the Lord honoring you. When he heals your children, that's the Lord honoring you. When everybody's going nuts and crazy in the world and you still have a sound mind, that's the Lord honoring you. Amen. He is honoring you. And do we want him to honor us more? Yes. Would you like the Lord to honor you more? Yes. Well, there's something that we can do for him to honor us more. What is honor? Well, let's say it this way first. Who, who does he honor, though? 
We just read it. Who does he honor? Those who what? Honor Honor him. It's not just random selection, right? It's not, you know, the Father God is not in heaven and he has a hat with everybody's names in it. And he says, Jesus, don't look, but draw out a name out of this hat. And he draws it out. CJ, it's your lucky day. Today you will be honored. No, he doesn't do that. No, it's not random selection. If he was able to honor you more than other people, that's because to a degree you honored him. You showed him some honor. And so because you showed him honor, he was able to honor you. And so, you know, he will even honor your children because you honored him. Sometimes your children may be living crazy, but the Lord say, because you obeyed me, I'll honor you. You know, I know that happened uh, at, at Kenneth E. Hagan Sr., his son, Pastor Hagen Jr., who's still alive, he's 86 or something like that, still pastoring in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Kenneth E. Hagen died, senior, died in 2003. And his son was, I think he was in the military. I don't want to say the story yeah. wrong. He was in the military, but he was not serving the Lord at that time, not trying to think of God. And he was on his motorcycle, and he wiped out on the side of a mountain. He wiped out. And you can see the skid marks, and all of a sudden, he's back on the road. And there's no way to explain it. He, looked, he thought, I'm dead. And all of a sudden, he's back on the road. Well, the Lord told him, uh, Brother Hagen, his dad, he said, if you had not stepped out and obeyed me and honored me, I wouldn't have been able to spare his life. So the Lord, he will honor those under you just because you're honoring him. That's some good news, amen? If you have a wayward child... Take comfort in that, that the Lord, if I'm honoring the Lord, he's going to honor me. And that means what is mine as well. Amen? Amen. But think about the disciples. We talked about it a little bit during the offering, but they left everything. They left their families as far as they're away from them. They left their careers. And was the Lord able to honor them? Were they able to see things that other people didn't see? They were able to see miracles. They were able to hear the sermons of Jesus that other people weren't hearing, right? They were able to see the resurrected Jesus. Think about that, that be alive during that time. Well, they were honored by the Lord. And how did that happen? Because they honored him. They valued him. Amen. So God does give more honor to some people than he does to others. He honors. You know, Peter actually... He, he spoke up to Jesus. He said, Lord, we left everything and followed you. We left, you know, houses, lands, and our mothers, fathers, wife, children, brothers, and sisters. The Lord said, hey, there's not no man that has left father, mother, brother, sister, lands, uh, children, wives. But in this, in this time, you'll receive a hundredfold. He said, now in this life. A hundredfold. Then he goes on to say, with persecution. You're going to get some persecution. You know, people won't be happy when you're getting things accumulated to you because you obeyed God and they didn't. But he said, and in the life to come, eternal life. So he's separating now and this time and in the life to come. But they honored the Lord. So if they honored the Lord, he's able to honor them. Amen. But God does honor some more about. Well, let's just ask this in the Bible in James 4, 6. It says what? He gives more grace. Can we get more grace from God than somebody else? Yes. Yes. He says he gives more grace, wherefore he resists the proud and gives grace to who? The humble. Not the proud. The humble get more grace. We can have more grace. We can have more honor from God. There's our responsibility in that. There's our part. Our part is to do the honoring God and he honors us. Our part is to humble ourselves, and he gives us more grace. Amen? Amen. So it's possible to get more honor from God, and that's the honor that we want. You know, we shouldn't get caught up and, you know, take, put too much stock in the honor that comes from people. You know, we really shouldn't, because people are what? They're fickle. Right. They'll, one day they'll be praising you like, oh, you're so good at this and you're, you're great. Yeah. And then they're ready to stone you and crucify you the next day. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Jesus actually said in John, I think 541, he said, I don't receive honor from men. Yeah. 
He said, I don't receive honor from men. In the next chapter, he, after he did the miracle with the loaves and the fishes and fed the 5,000, he multiplied it. It says that he sensed, he perceived that they were going to take him by force to make him a king. And what did he do? He left and went into a solitary place alone. He went into a mountain by himself. Why? Because I don't receive honor from men. He wasn't looking to be glorified. He wasn't looking to get all the credit. He always gave all the credit to the Father. He said, the words you hear, they're not mine. They're my Father. The works you see, they're not mine. They're my Father. He was always giving God the glory, and he was not trying to get the, the credit that comes from men. Because, you know, men, one day they're up and one day they're down. One day they love you. I mean, you know, you watch sports before, right? You've done it, right? Oh, you stink. And then the next time, oh, man, I, he's great. I love him. It's like, what? No. You know, well, I don't want to get into that. But uh, we, we need to not be people like that, though. Amen? Amen? We need to be people that aren't, we don't need to be fickle people. You know, just because people are on TV, that doesn't give you a right to dishonor and criticize and think that it's okay because, hey, they're on TV. They don't, I don't know them in person. It's not different. Or social media, right? Right? What you sow is what you're going to reap no matter where. It doesn't matter the distance. What you sow is what you're going to reap. Amen? But, you know, people are unpredictable. They're unfaithful. Amen? But what is honor? What is honor? Let me, let's define what honor is. Honor is, if you look this up in the Strong's Concordance, it has to do with being heavy and being weighty. And what, and what do you mean by that? Well, biblical days, uh, when you purchase something, there was a scale system. And the price might have been a heavy price. Well, so you had to bring out the shekels and put them on the scale or the talent, the gold talent. And you had to put enough on that scale so that the weight of it was equal to the value of the thing you were purchasing. So it has to do with weightiness. It has to do with what you value. How much do you value God? Some other words uh, for honor are great value, great significance, and importance. So honor is how much you consider God worth. It's how much you recognize God is worth. That includes his things. That includes his people. It's how much do you consider his things as important, of more weight. It's looking at God's things and wanting to give God's things your very best. You're not, not giving him your leftovers. Not just giving him what you have left, you know. It's like, uh, you ever hear that phrase, one man's treasure or one man's garbage, junk is another man's treasure? No, not with God. If it's junk and you were about to throw it away, you shouldn't come and say, oh, let me give it to the church instead. No, it's junk. You don't give junk to God. You don't give stuff you're about to throw away to God. That's not giving God your best. That's not showing him honor, right? You know, in, in our daily lives, uh, you, you want to give God your best when you have the most energy. Don't read the Bible every day when, whoa, when you know you're about to fall asleep. <laughs> don't read it at midnight if that's not the time that you're the best and brightest and alert. Don't say, let me read my Bible now. And you know, <coughs> no, we're, we're laughing, but would that be honoring God? No, that's not giving God your best. Giving God your best is, hey, when am I the most alert? That's when I'm going to pray. That's when I'm going to worship the Lord. That's when I'm going to read the word. Honor is giving God your very best. And, you know, I, I've been to places... Man, I don't know if they understand, but I've been to churches where it's filthy. You look at the stage, you look at the floor. Now, of course, if you're renting a place, you've got to do what you can do, the best you can do. But it's like they didn't clean in years. Like, they didn't do anything. Well, would you treat your own home that way? Maybe some of them would, but, but we shouldn't, though. This is the place where we meet. And even though the church is yet yeah, we are the church, we are the temple of God, where we, we come together, right. it makes it holy. That's right. And the place that we're meeting becomes holy because we're there. That's right. When we're there, it's a holy thing. Very it's a thing that God ordained, he established, so we don't just treat it like, eh, whatever, it's just a church. Just right. let me just clean up a little bit. No, 
How would you treat your guests that were coming over that you haven't seen in a year? What would you do at your house? You would get it ready, wouldn't you? You would do your very best. You'd get the nice china out. You wouldn't get the chip china. You wouldn't say, yeah, get that, you know, dirty stuff. Who cares, you know? No, it's just guests, you know, from out of town that I haven't seen. No, you would do your very best. Well, that's what honor does. Honor gives God its very best. Honor is not giving God the leftovers. It's giving God the best. Amen? Amen. Amen. Should we honor the Lord today? Yes. Now, you know, remember, we're reading the Bible. It says, those that honor me, I will honor. You know, God is not a different God in the New Testament, in the New Covenant, than he is in the Old Covenant. Malachi 3, 6 says, I am the Lord, I change not. He doesn't change. In the New Covenant, just because, you know, Jesus paid the price for our sins, that doesn't mean that, you know, we can now dishonor God in the New Testament. That doesn't mean he said, hey, you know, Jesus did all the honoring in your place. You don't have to honor me anymore. Just live how you want to live. Treat my things the way you want. No. So, but I say that because people get foolish. They think in the new covenant that means, hey, we can be disrespectful and disrespect God's things and dishonor the things of God. No, it doesn't mean that. It means we actually want to honor him more. That's right. We want to honor the things of God more and treat him with more weight and more significance. Amen? Amen. You know, uh, we're, we're making him a bigger deal, not a lesser deal. We're making him greater, right. not smaller. We're making his things more important, not less important. Amen? Amen. Amen. And when we do that, when we honor his things, he will honor our things. Yes. You know, just like we said before, if we are humble, we get more grace. Well, there's things in the word of God that are our part. And there's things that are his part. That's right. Our responsibility. And then he has his part and what he's going to do. You know, the Bible says draw near to God. And what will he, what will he do? Draw he near. will draw near to us. So that's something we do. We draw near to him and out of his mercy and out of his love and his compassion, he would offer us closeness and intimacy with him if we say, hey, Lord, I'm coming closer to you. So it's our part. We do our part first and God comes closer to us. Amen. Amen. But does God still despise today? Well, if if the first part is true, that if we honor him, he will honor us. Then the second part is true as well. That those, what does it say here? Far be it from me, for those who honor me, I will honor, and those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Well, what does that mean, despise? That means to hold in contempt. That means something is beneath consideration and worthless and make light of. The good, the, uh, God's word translation says this. It says, but now the Lord declares, I promise that I will honor those who honor me and those who despise me will be considered insignificant. My I mean, just think about it. Why would he honor people who are treating him and his things as valuable? You know, he's already done a lot for us, but we just say, God, it's not that important. I don't care. No big deal. And why is he saying this here? If we look at the background of why, is he, why he's saying this, The Lord placed Eli and his sons over the offerings of the Lord at the temple. So the people would come in, they would make sacrifices to the Lord. And the Lord made provision for Eli, for his two sons, to receive a portion of the meat offering. But they were abusing this privilege. They were mistreating the privilege. They were having uh, sex with the ladies that came into uh, the door uh, outside. And they were mistreating and abusing the things of God. They were treating it as though it's insignificant and it's worthless. See, these are God's things. And they're just acting like, who cares? Just an offering of meat. Give me some more of that. They weren't treating it with any value. You know, that's a big deal to God. The things people offer to him, our offerings, our lives. It's, you know, uh, Cain killed Abel over an offering. Why? Because Abel honored God more with his offering. He brought God his best. He didn't give God leftovers. That's what Cain did. Cain didn't value. Cain just said, "Ah, here's some shrubs here. Just give God some leftover. Abel brought his very best. He brought his very best, and because of that, the Lord honored him, and that upset Cain to the point where he killed Abel. 
And so it's important to honor God, amen? amen? Do you think he doesn't care about those things anymore? No, he still cares, amen? He still cares if you're a billionaire and you bring two dollars, that's insi- he will treat you as insignificant. He will say, don't even bring it. And I would say that, hey, if you are not happy to do what God, you know, to, to give an offering, to sow into the offering, don't do it. Because you won't receive a harvest from it. You're not going to be blessed from it if you are not excited to do it and if it doesn't mean anything to you. If it's not your best, if you're not giving God your all, then, hey, don't even do it. Amen? Amen. I know people don't like when you talk about those things, but, you know, there's a couple of things people don't like in church when you talk about, when you talk about marriage and we talk about money. People do not like to talk about those things, but we shouldn't play games and pretend. We should talk about what the Word of God talks about and not be afraid to talk about it. Amen? But let's, let's read what happened uh, with, uh, with them. Well, verse 29, go to verse 29. The Lord said this to, the, uh, to Eli, why do you kick at my sacrifice and my offering, which I have commanded in my dwelling place, and honor your sons more than me, to make yourselves fat with the best of all the offerings of Israel, my people? So they're, what, they're treating God's things like no big deal. And he's saying, hey, you're honoring your own children above me. And that did not please the Lord. And, you know, this is what the enemy wants. He wants us to treat everything as common, that there's no difference. There's no levels of honor anymore. Have you noticed that in our culture? There's no, nothing is sacred. There's no degrees of honor. Everything is just casual and nothing is, you know, to be lifted up and to be elevated. Everybody is treated as common. You know, what happened to yes, sir, yes, ma'am? I think that's our young people do so, been doing that here. But how I many know, and you can go to a fast food restaurant. I probably shouldn't say that, but I already did it, right? And they can be so disrespectful sometimes. Well, it's not, I'm not their parent. It's not my job to correct them. But I don't know if you've ever been to a place and like, what? They kind of just stare at you. You get to the drive-thru. We went to a place recently and so, they even say hi. We just pulled up. They're like, we don't got no more of this. I'm like, oh, okay. They say, we don't got anything but this, basically is what they said. And I said, oh, so, so do you guys have this? And they said, that has nothing to do with the chicken, you know, because they said they didn't have no more chicken. They, only, they said they only have bone-in chicken, and I wanted some chicken. So all the, they said, I only got bone, we only got bone-in chicken. I was like, so that means you got no sides or nothing like that? They're like, that have nothing to do with the chicken. They said it all mean and stuff. I was like, man, I, I'm out of here. I'm not taking it. I'm, I'm leaving this place. <laughs> you know, but I mean, no, just no honor, no respect any place, right? It's just the culture that we live in, that people are not, you know, there's no authority. There's no honor for parents, no honor for authority. And if people are that way with their parents, then they're that way with God, too. If they're that way with their teachers, they're that way with God. Because what it's stemming from is a lack of honor of God. When you don't honor God, you don't honor his people. You don't honor those that he's placed in authority. You know, and God takes that personal. You remember when the, uh, after Moses had sent the 12 spies into Canaan land to search out the promised land, that when the 12 spies came back and they brought back that evil report and they begin to complain and murmur, it says that they complained and murmur against Moses and Aaron. But later on in that same chapter, 14 of Numbers, the Lord said, I hear the murmuring and complaining against me. me. See, when you complain against his people, his leaders, you're complaining against the Lord. He takes it personal. He didn't say, hey, I hear them complaining about you, Moses. What are you going to do about it? No, he said, I hear the complaining that this evil generation, he called them, is complaining that they're murmuring and complaining against me. Same thing with Saul before he became the Apostle Paul, before he had his name changed by the Lord and he became the Apostle Paul on the road to Damascus. You know, he was persecuting Christians. And on his road to Damascus, he had that experience with the Lord. The Lord revealed himself. And he said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting those Christians? Did he say that? No. No. (laughs) You guys know the word, right? He said, why are you persecuting me? He took it personal. See, when you do something and you dishonor his people, he takes it personal. 
You know, we were reading uh, in pre-service prayer, when you minister unto the saints, you minister unto the Lord. When you do something to God, you're doing something to his people. Well, when you dishonor his people, you dishonor God as well. Amen? And these are not things to be taken lightly, but why was the Lord removing the privilege of the priesthood from Eli and his sons? If you read, or what, what happened actually, go to verse 30. Uh, it says, therefore, the Lord God of Israel says, I said indeed that your house and the house of your father would walk before me forever. But now the Lord says, far be it from me. For those who honor me, I will honor. Those who despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Behold, the days are coming that I will cut off your arm and the arm of your father's house so that there will not be an old man in your house. He's talking about their strength. And you will see an enemy in my dwelling place, despite all the good which God does for Israel. And there shall not be an old man in your house forever. But any of your men whom I do not cut off from my altar shall consume your eyes and grieve your heart. And all the descendants of your house shall die in the flower of their age. Now this shall be a sign to you that will come upon your two sons on Hophni and Phinehas. And in one day they shall die, both of them. Then I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who shall do according to what is in my heart and in my mind. I will build him a sure house and he shall walk before my anointed forever. And it shall come to pass that everyone who is left in your house will come and bow down to him for a piece of silver and a morsel of bread and say, please put me in one of the priestly positions that I may eat a piece of bread. Should they have honored the things of God? Yes. Should they have not treated disrespectful the things of God? Right. Notice what happened. Their health was cut off. Their place in the kingdom, their provision, it was cut off. It was cut off. Now, he tried to rebuke them, but obviously he didn't do it strong enough because the Lord still got on Eli. He tried to rebuke his sons. He tried to tell them, hey, what you're doing is not good. But he obviously didn't do it strong enough. And he was also part of it, too, because he was partaking it with them. Now, when I'm talking about this, we're not talking about fear and condemnation. If you, God is merciful, he's gracious. I'm not talking about being in fear, though every little thing you do, you, oh, no, am I honoring God? Oh, 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 no, we're not talking about legalism. We're not talking about that, we, you know, when we come to the house of God, you know, we got to be robotic and all do our service unto the Lord and no laughing and stuff. We're not talking about that. Laugh, have fun, but do your best while you're doing it. Give God honor while you're doing it. You know, if we call, you know, if we happen to call, you know, we don't do, we purposely don't, we haven't yet. Um, I try not to take people's time too much, you know. I think in a church you can have too much going on where, you know, you're there every day. Well, you got other things going on, right? You know, some churches, you know, you could be there almost every day. And some, some people use that as an excuse to escape life and never do anything, never be around their spouse or just at church every day, right? But no. But, you know, if you honor God's things and we say, hey, guys, you know, we're having this. Well, if it's important to you, say, ah, it, 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 but if you despise, you're like, ah, something again. See, that's despising the things of God, amen? That's not treating it with value. But we're not talking about fear. We're not talking about condemnation. God is merciful. He's gracious. But we are talking about not having a callous heart towards the things of God, not having a rebellious heart, not having a heart that says, yeah, I know the Bible says that, but I ain't doing it. <laughs> I know the Bible says husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church, but you don't know my wife. She's a heathen. I'm not doing it. No, this, no. I know the Bible says to forgive, and, but I'm not forgiving them. You don't know what they did. No, you, you don't. Whoa, you don't want to do that. That would be dishonoring God. It's one thing when you're believing God and you're struggling and you're asking the Lord to help you, but your heart is to want to do it. Your heart is to want to honor him. And it's a completely different thing to just be rebellious and say, I'm not going to treat this as important. I'm not going to honor this. No, that's something you don't want to do that's right. because you don't want the Lord saying, well, I'm done considering you uh, significant and important. You don't want that. Amen? amen. No, we don't want that at all. Uh, say this. The Lord is worth my honor. 
You know, now this is a big subject, and I'm kind of flying through this, and actually all the things that we talked about, we could stay on them for weeks and weeks, every single one. But we're introducing these, the foundations. This is the culture of this family, this church that we're building, that it's going to be a church that honors the Lord. It's going to be a family that honors the Lord, and we don't treat his things and God as unimportant and insignificant and of no value. Amen? But it's not just what goes on here because we want you guys to be honored. We want you guys to treat God's things with honor so he can honor you, so that he can bless you and he can promote you and increase you. That's what we want. Amen? Go to, uh, go to Matthew. Well, actually, no. Go, go to Malachi chapter 6. Malachi chapter 6. Or Malachi, that's the Italian prophet, Malachi. <laughs> Malachi. If you don't know where Malachi is, go to Matthew and then go backwards to the Old Testament. One book over. Malachi. What did I say? Three. Malachi 1, chapter 1. Uh, verse 6. Let me just read this. I wasn't sure if I was going to read this or not, but it says this. A son honors his father and a servant his master. If then I am the father, where is my honor? And if I am a master, where is my reverence, says the Lord of hosts, to you priest who despise my name? Yet you say, in what way have we despised your name? You offer defiled food on my altar, but say, in what way have we defiled you? By saying the table of the Lord is contemptible. And when you offer the blind as a sacrifice, is it not evil? And when you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it then to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Would he accept you favorably, says the Lord of hosts? See what's going on. They're bringing God the leftovers. They're leaving God. They're bringing God cheap stuff and stuff that doesn't mean anything to them they're saying here you go god instead of you know maybe they were about to leave the house husband and wife and they're going to take the best sheep and offer it to the lord and then one of the spouses said no no don't take that one take that ugly one over there we'll take that one and we'll sell them we'll make a profit off of it take that ugly sheep he's saying you dishonoring me you dishonoring me you you treating my things as insignificant as unimportant. And he said, would you do that to your governor? Would you do that to one of your leaders? Wow. But you do it to me. That's why I said God must go from theory to reality. That's so good. He can't just be a theory. He can't just be some spiritual element. He has to be real to us that, Lord, I'm really doing this unto you. I am really endeavoring to give you my best, not just what's left over. So I'm giving you the best of my efforts. I'm giving you the best of my service, not, not the worn out, not the ugly, not the stuff that you're about to throw away. Give him the best, amen? He's worth our honor, amen? You know, other people, it's a sad reality that even amongst Christians, other people get more honor than the Lord. They get more respect than the Lord. He says, where is my honor? Father gets his honor, master gets his, where is my honor? People respect the, their governor. They respect their politicians, their favorite politicians. Man, they'll, they'll praise them and, and they'll be ready to bow down to their favorite politicians. And, and no matter what, they'll be on a march and parade for their favorite politicians. But what about the Lord? Where is your honor and respect for him? They're ready to defend their politicians and de- defend their favorite celebrities and YouTubers. And they know more about them than they do God. No, that's not, that's not right. Amen. We want to honor him. We want to say, God, you are more valuable to me than those people. I'm not going to give you the leftovers. I'm going to give you my best. Amen? Go to uh, Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. You know, uh, when you think about the rich young ruler, who remembers that story about the rich young ruler? He was, the, you know, he went to the master. He came to the Lord. And he said, hey, I've obeyed all these commandments. I've done all these things. What next? What else? And the Lord said, well, you know, if you want to inherit eternal life, he said, sell all your possessions, give everything to the poor, and come and follow me. And he was sad 
at those sayings, the Bible says. He was sad because he had great possessions and he left. Well, what did he value more? He valued his possessions. He valued his things. Now, don't people make doctrines about this? The Lord didn't tell everybody to do that. He didn't tell everyone, sell everything you have and give everything to the poor. No, this was specific to him. But he is asking us to value him more than anything else. He is asking us to honor him more than anything else. And I don't think this young man realized what he missed out on. Because he missed out on the Lord honoring him by being a part of a team of people who got to see the miracles, who got to be a part of the, the miraculous things that God did, the Lord did, the sermons, to be a part of Jesus' ministry. He missed out on the Lord honoring him. See, he, I don't think he realized that. I think he had a degree uh, of faith and honor because why is he coming to the Lord? But then there was a place where he was like, I'm not willing to go this far. I'm not willing to honor him this much more. And so this is important, amen, that we hold God up higher and elevate him up higher and value him more than anything, amen? amen. Go to Mark, you're at Mark 6, right? Yes. Verse 1, it says this, this is talking about Jesus here, it says, then he went out from there and came to his own country and his disciples followed him. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in a synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him, that such mighty works are performed by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, Joses, Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? So they were offended at him. Now, let's just stop right there. Are they showing the Lord any honor? No, this is disrespect. They're questioning him like, who's this guy? I, I grew up with him. Who does he think he is? Where did he get this wisdom from? They are dishonoring the Lord. Do you see that? They're, they're dishonoring. They're disrespecting. They're talking among each other. Who does he think? I know his mom and dad. I know his brother and sister. They're actually sowing dishonor amongst themselves. They're talking. They're asking questions. They're sowing seeds of dishonor. Uh, you know, I, I was talking to a person one time that respected me. He was telling me something that his pastor had implemented at his church. And he kind of wanted my opinion. He respected me, so he kind of wanted my opinion about it. And, you know, the guy wasn't doing, the pastor wasn't doing anything immoral. It was nothing unbiblical at all, yeah. you know. It was just something that he put in place. And he asked me what I thought. I was like, eh, I don't know if I really, I don't agree with that. I wouldn't do it that way. But, you know, um, and that, that was it. I left. And, man, my heart was convicted after that. And I asked the Lord, you know, what happened, why I feel this way, what's going on. And he said, basically, I just disrespected that man's pastor. That I sowed a seed of dishonor that now he looks at his pastor as less than he did before. He looks at his pastor as like someone who well, maybe he doesn't hear from God as well as I thought he did. And I sowed that seed of dishonor. And the Lord really corrected me about it. And I had to call him up and I had to repent and I had to apologize. But the damage was already done. Now he's got to work through that. You know, I mean, like I said, it was nothing immoral. It was nothing bad. It was nothing wrong that the pastor was doing. It was just something, if he's the pastor of that church and he felt like that's the way God told him to do it, who am I to say anything? But I stupidly and foolishly did at the time, you know, so I'm being honest, you know, but I saw the seed of dishonor and the Lord corrected me about it. And, you know, how many know that that happened in the New Testament where Paul, they were preaching and it says that, the, gent the Jews, evil affected the minds of the unbelieving Gentiles. The unbelieving Jews, evil affected the minds of the Gentiles. They poisoned their minds. They planted a seed so that they did not receive. They were like, mm, I'm not receiving this. Well, it's a dangerous situation to sow dishonor, to sow a seed of disrespect. We don't want to do that, amen? God, like I said before, God takes these things personal. And we shouldn't just be flipping about the things that we say. We should really examine, oh, wait a minute. I, I'm disrespecting this person. I'm disrespecting this person of God, this man of God. I'm going to lay off this because God takes it personal. Amen? Amen. 
I'm telling you how he corrected me at that. We don't want that, amen? amen. Well, where are we at? Uh, verse 4, right? It's just that, you know, the enemy, he wants us to devalue God's people. He wants to de- us to devalue God's things. He wants to treat us to treat them with such unimportance and insignificance that it's no big deal to just to fly off your mouth and say things and talk about people without thinking about it because we're not thinking higher up, wow. level up in my speech, in my honor, in the way I talk about God's things, in the way I talk about his people. You're his people too, amen? amen. Well, we, we want to raise ourselves up in the way we talk about one another, right? You know, in this church, there should not be, and let me just say this, there should not be, and you help other people that come in here, there should not be people talking about what somebody else is going through. Because if, if, ta- if you are talking about what somebody else is going through in this church, it should be to somebody who can do something about it, like us, a leader. If you're just doing it to talk, and there's no one that can help them, you're not doing it to help the person, then it's gossip. Right. And that should not go on. We don't talk about people and what they're going through. That's, that's just gossip. Amen? Amen? No, that's disrespectful. That's dishonorable Amen. to what people are going through. We wouldn't want people to do that with us, right? We don't want everybody knowing what we're going through <laughs> if we didn't tell them, you know? And you, you, know, you don't want to, you know, sometimes church can be a place where you tell one person, then all of a sudden everybody knows in a church. Well, that should not be, amen? Now, of course, now we, you know, don't expect perfection out of me and I won't expect perfection out of you. <laughs> Let's just get that out of the way. If you don't expect me to be perfect, I won't expect you to be perfect. And we'll be happy, amen? We'll be, hey, hey, pastor, you know, did that or said that. I know he's, you know, he probably said that on accident or whatever. Hey, didn't say hi or whatever. Don't, don't expect me to be perfect. I won't expect you to be perfect. Amen. 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 But we don't reject one another either, though. We're not rejecting one another. We, we, yeah, we, we walk worthy of the Lord. We're honorable people. But we don't have to reject somebody because they're not living at the standard we're living at yet. We don't have to treat them. That's right as, you know, you're beneath me because you have not attained to the level of my spiritual maturity. No, well, then you're being immature right now <laughs> because love will speak the truth in love so that they can grow up. Amen? Amen. So good. Amen. Uh, okay, where were we here? Verse, yes, Mark 6, verse 4. Thank you. It says, but Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country among his own relatives, and in his own house. Now, he could do no mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them, and he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the villages in a circuit teaching. Notice that. Not that he wouldn't do any miracles. He couldn't do any miracles. It says, he he said a prophet is not without honor. He didn't have any honor. He didn't have the respect. And so if there's no honor, no respect, well, there's no faith, right? There's not going to be any faith there if there's no honor there. And so there's no faith, no miracles, no healing. He said only a few people. Why? Because the few, the the many were sowing seeds of disrespect. Do you see that there was no honor there? There was no disrespect. There was no honor. There was no treating what he's saying as important and weighty. And because of that, he couldn't do the miracles that he wanted to do. The Father could not honor them because they were not honoring the Father. They were not honoring Jesus. They were refusing to honor. You know, but only a few. Why only the few? Why was it only the few? Is it God uh, God of favoritism? No. The Bible says that he is no respecter of persons. So why were only a few able to be healed? Why was he only able to heal, heal a few sick folk? Could it be that they were the only ones, they were the only ones who were valuing and who were esteeming, who were listening when everybody else is disrespecting, saying, who's this guy I think he is? They're like, I don't know, but it's good. I'm listening. I respect it. I, I like what he's saying. I believe in what he's saying. It sounds right to me. This sounds like God to me. They were the ones respecting and valuing it. And because they were the few that were respecting and valuing it, they could get some healing. They can get some miracles. Amen. 
You know, God is not just, think about all the religious people that Jesus encountered in his day, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the religious leaders that were always trying to catch him in doing something on the Sabbath. You know, they were trying to catch him in doing something wrong. Oh, you did something on this Sabbath day. You weren't supposed, they're always trying to catch him in a trap. And you know that they, they didn't believe in him. They were trying to debate with him, right? Did he say, you know, you whitewashed tombs, you children of the devil, but I'm going to honor you anyway. Here's a miracle. No, that never happened, right? Never, never happened because they're dishonoring him. They're di- because they were dishonoring him, the father could not could. honor them. It's not that he wouldn't want to. He could not. He could not. And now, now think about these things. Let's bring this down to our everyday lives. If we honor the Lord, he will honor us. Right. You know, if I honor my wife, he will honor me. The Bible talks about husbands, honor your wives. Don't be bitter against them or your prayers can be hindered. That means unhonored prayer. That means I won't be honored in this situation. We're, these are answers now. These are answers to questions people have. We got to honor the Lord. We got to come up in our honor for his things so that he can honor us. Amen? Amen. Let's honor his thing. But notice it was the few, the few that honored the Lord. Why the few? Why just the few? Well, you know, the Bible says broad is the way that leads to destruction. And many are on that path. But narrow is the way and difficult is the path. And what? Few are on that path. Why the few? Just the few, because those are the few that were willing to honor the Lord. Those are the few that are willing to honor the sacrifice of the Father that, uh, that he sent his son Jesus. Those are the few that are looking at that and saying, hey, I accept Jesus as my Lord. Those are the few. Are you the few? Are you the few that say, I'm going to honor God. I'm going to honor his things. I'm going to say these are weighty, these are significant, and I'm going to treat it with high esteem and high value. I'm not going to belittle it. I'm not going to diminish his things. I'm not going to give God the leftovers. I'm going to give God my best. Are you the few? The faithful, the few, those that are willing to honor God when the rest of the culture is despising him and treating his things insignificant. We're saying, Lord, I honor you. I honor what you did through Jesus. I honor the the sacrifice. I honor your love. I honor your blood. I'm honoring you, and he will honor you. Amen? Amen? The Bible says this in John 12, 26. He says, uh, you don't have to turn there. He says, if anyone serves me, let him follow me, and where I am there, my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. You know, there's nothing more that can compare to the Father's honor. You know, if every, just naturally, if the relationship is right, every child wants the honor of their father. They want their father to be pleased with them, right? They want their father to say, good job, well done. Man, that was good. I'm, I'm pleased with you. Well, you know, and well, there's nothing more important than the honor from God. And it says if we serve him, our, the Father God He'll honor us. He will honor us. See, when you've been serving God your whole life and maybe nobody recognized you and nobody pointed you out and nobody gave you any respect and recognition, the Lord will still honor you. And he, because he saw what you were going through and maybe you had some difficult moments in life and we all have, right? And you had some trials and tribulations and even through your pain and even through your tears, you got up, you said, Lord, I'm still honoring you. I'm still going to be faithful to you. I'm still going to praise you. I'm still going to live for you. Well, the Lord will honor you. He will honor you. Amen. When nobody else recognized what you were going through, the Lord will still honor you. And more than that, there's coming a day when there's going to be one last gospel message preached and one last salvation and one last altar call. And then the father, he's going to shut the book and he's going to say, hey, that's it. He's going to look at his son. He's going to say, it's time to go get my children. And then what's going to happen is the trumpet is going to sound and the dead in Christ will rise first. And those that are alive will meet him in the air and he'll say, today, I honor you because you honored me. I'm going to honor you. 
because you honor me in front of everybody in a world that was despising me, in a world that did not love me and that care about me and didn't care about my sacrifice and what I did for them. Today, I honor you. And when nobody else saw what you did here, when nobody else saw what you did on this earth for the kingdom of God, the Lord is going to bring you in front of everybody and say, this is what my son did. This is what my daughter did that nobody recognized. See, when everybody is giving the accolades to people, to fame and celebrities, even Christian ones, the Lord is going to say, this person right here, they honored me and they did everything they did unto the Lord, not for men, not to please men, not to be seen by men. And today I'm honoring them in front of all the angels, in front of all the heavenly hosts, in front of all the children of God. Today, I honor you. Are you the few that are going to be honored? Are you the few that are saying, I will honor the Lord? I'm going to live for him. I'm going to hold his things up high. I'm going to value his things. I'm going to esteem them. I'm going to treat them as significant and important. Is that you today? Amen. Amen. Well, stand up with me. We hope this message has encouraged you today. For more information on our ministry or to donate, visit onewayministries.net.